So what do we know about this system? Well, the observed rate of rise quantifies how fast the CO2 is building up in the atmosphere. We know the mass of the atmosphere, so we can translate that into a number of billion tons of carbon accumulating as CO2 in the atmosphere annually. And that's what this reflects, 37 billion metric tons of carbon accumulation. This is a, the decadal average ending in year 2003. Um, we know that CO2 is coming from fossil fuel burning. We have a pretty good handle on that. Uh, it, over the same decade was about 6.5 billion metric tons of, of, of carbon, and this ratio is that 57%. That is the 3.7 over 6.5 is your 57%. So where could the carbon that's not ending up in the atmosphere be going? Well, we know that the oceans have a capacity to absorb CO2, and in fact, the science of this was worked out more or less in the late 1950s at the same time as the documented rise. And among the participants in that discovery was Roger Revell at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography. And someone who, who I need to mention here is a fellow named Bert Bolin, who passed away just uh, a matter of weeks ago. He was a, a, dear, a dear friend and, a, and a really a giant in our field. And he was the first person to establish that the oceans should be taking up somewhere around half of what we were releasing. He also went on to found the IPCC another major accomplishment. So the ocean should be taking up CO2. Um, this happens in part, large measure, because the ocean is an alkaline liquid. It has a capacity for neutralizing acid. And uh, we'll hear more about this in the next talk, but it also hinges critically on this ion here, the so-called carbonate ion, as to how much the oceans can take up. The land also has the potential to absorb carbon dioxide. Trees grow, of course, and as they grow, they take up CO2. But forests by themselves don't automatically for every tree that's growing, there's another that's fallen over and decaying. So we're having trouble with sound, aren't we? Is there anything I should do differently here? No? You don't know what's going on? OK. Seems like it's an electrical contact problem. OK. <clears throat> so, so trees take up CO2. Forests don't necessarily, because they can be in a balance where they're not accumulating biomass. Nevertheless, it's possible that this, the plants will respond to rising carbon dioxide by, by growing faster, because carbon dioxide does act as a fertilizer, an aerial fertilizer for many types of plants. And that could, in principle, cause plants to accumulate ecosystems to accumulate carbon. We also know that direct human impacts on land, particularly the clearing of previously forested land for agriculture, leads to carbon dioxide releases. So we have buildup in the atmosphere, we have releases from fossil fuel, and then we have an array of processes where we know there's some. We know the sum of all three of these because they have to add up to the difference between what didn't end up in the air. But by these two fairly well-defined quantities, we don't have the individual quantities. We only have their sum. Now, one thing you can do is you can, of course, go out and actually look at how much carbon's in the ocean. You can try to track how much carbon's in different ecosystems and in different plots of land around the world. And you can try to account for what's going on with land. This is going on in a very ambitious and concerted way right now. Um, it is important to emphasize, though, that there's one nice handle on this that can come from the air itself, and that's by looking at changes in atmospheric oxygen. Now, it turns out that as we're burning fossil fuel, we're, of course, taking carbon dioxide, we're, 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 we're removing oxygen from the atmosphere, so that's been going into the carbon dioxide in part. Also, some of it actually goes into making water, the exhaust of a car. If you look on a cold day, there's a lot of steam coming out the back. That's the water that got made. Some of that came from oxygen in the air. There's, um, if plants are taking CO2 out of the atmosphere, they're also producing oxygen. And if there's biomass burning or land use change that has CO2 from biomass being decomposed, that will also involve uptake of oxygen. So all three of these processes that involve organic matter either being formed or destroyed have a reciprocal effect on oxygen. The uptake of carbon dioxide by the oceans is an inorganic process that has, in this expression here, no effect on oxygen. So if you could measure the change in oxygen in the atmosphere and correct for the fossil fuel effect, you can get a handle on the net of these two and therefore on the ocean since their sum is constrained. 